Uranus is a great planet. We're very excited about Uranus. <laughs> Uranus. You have to ask. You can pronounce it many different ways. When I was young, it was pronounced Uranus, much to the amusement of all concerned. There's uh, the Uranus or the Uranus pronunciation. I actually used to say Uranus, but when I started teaching, I realized that you just completely lose the concentration of the students, and so now I call it Uranus. <laughs> These days, you try to say it as quickly as you can and move on to talk about the exciting things that go on there rather than giggling interminably about the name of the planet. But yes, so without any stress at all, Uranus is the name of the planet. It's, uh, it's the seventh planet away from the sun, and it looks kind of blue-green. It's got a cyan color, which is completely due to what is in the atmosphere. So there's a lot of methane in the atmosphere. And when the sun comes, and it shines through the upper atmosphere, and it reflects off of the clouds, and then when it comes back out through that layer of methane, the methane absorbs all the red light. And so what we see is kind of a blue-green color. It's, it, it's peculiar. Um, in that the, the, the main peculiarity of it is that actually it, it doesn't orbit the same way the other planets orbit. Uranus has 27 moons. Uh, it's got quite a few, but they're all pretty small. And interestingly, they're all named after the characters in Shakespearean plays and novels. So there's Ophelia and Juliet. And it's one of the more interesting planets in the solar system for the neat reason that it is knocked on its side. Wait. Can I get a prop? Yes, please. So most of the planets, you've got all the planets orbiting around the solar system, and they're all spinning on their axes. And most of them are spinning on their axes like little tops, in the sense that they're kind of spinning around as they go around the sun. So you can imagine if you were looking down at the solar system from above, you'd see all of the planets orbiting in a plane. And most of them are rotating with an axis that's kind of perpendicular to that plane. So for example, the Earth, is its axis is at 23 0.5 degrees, so it, it's rotating along like this. What's different about Uranus is that it actually, it, as it orbits around the sun, it actually orbits this way, it goes around like that. So it's like it, it, almost as if it was rolling its way around the solar system. So it's sort of on its side, and its axis, the thing it's rotating around, is actually pointed pretty much towards the sun. What this means is that if you were sitting on the north pole of Uranus, you would experience 42 years of daylight and then 42 years of darkness as you made your way around the sun. But we don't know why exactly it ended up that way. We can only speculate that there was some massive collision in the early uh, parts of its formation history. The, the most common theory, the most popular theory, is that at some stage during its life something very bad happened to it, and in fact something about the size of the Earth smashed into it, and obviously that gave it a huge knock and was able to knock it off its axis and get it pointing in a different direction. Um, and that's until recently has been the most common theory and it really doesn't work and the main reason it doesn't work is that Uranus actually has a whole bunch of moons around it and the moons are all, just as the planet's orbiting around on its side, the moons are all going around as well in the same plane as the planet's rotating. Now if late in its lifetime something had just given the planet a knock, it wouldn't have done anything to the moons at all. So you should have ended up with the moons all going around one way and the planet then orbiting on its side. But because the, the moons all orbit in this same plane that the planet's rotating in as well, it's got to be something more fundamental in the, in the formation history of the planet that actually caused it to, to, to end up lying on its side. Just very recently, a new paper has come out suggesting a possible explanation as to why the planet's orbiting on its side. And the idea is, so the way that it's now thought the solar system formed is that all the giant planets initially were quite close together in the, in the solar system. And over time, they kind of interacted with each other and interacted with the leftover material in the solar system and ended up migrating. And so people have been doing some computer simulations as to what happens during this migration. And that they found that there is at least one fairly contrived set of circumstances in which a planet can end up turning over onto its side as it migrates in this way. And the contrived set of circumstances are the planet initially has to get knocked out of the plane of, that the, orbit, the planet's orbiting, so it ends up at a slightly inclined orbit. And it has to have a big moon. And then the combination of the interaction with this big moon orbiting around it and the fact that it's now in an inclined orbit turns out to be enough to get the whole planet and its moons to all tip over together. Now, the snag with this theory is that Uranus doesn't have a big moon, doesn't have a moon of the appropriate side. The moon has to be something like 1% the total mass of the planet, which for a, a large gas giant is a huge moon, and there isn't one. And so the last thing you then have to do is then get rid of this enormous moon, which might be possible because, as I say, at this stage in the solar system's life, you know, the giant planets were interacting with each other quite often, so they get quite close together quite often. And so it's possible that, you know, that Uranus sometime during this migration ended up going sufficiently close to one of the other giant planets that, that, that the moon just got ejected entirely from it.
That's so, going to be tough on to prove, isn't it? it? It's very tough because it's gone now. And, you know, you can prove that it works in the sense that you can do a kind of computer simulation of the lifetime of the, of the solar system and show that under certain circumstances this, what, this is what happens. Um, but actually showing that that is actually how Uranus formed and why it ended up lying on its side is almost impossible, I'd say. Yeah, so um, it was discovered by William Herschel in 1781, so a British astronomer. Um, known for his comet hunting. He thought it was a comet at first, but it turned out to be a planet. So the only other thing I know about Uranus is that it almost ended up being called George, um, because Herschel, the guy who discovered it, um, one of the things if you discover a planet is you actually get to name it. Herschel, being politically astute, thought it would probably be a good name, good idea to name it after um, whoever was in power at the time, who happened to be George III. Herschel was all for calling it George, actually not for calling it George, he wanted to call it George's Star. And it's, you know, never a bad idea to kind of toady to your, to your potential uh, funding agency. And in that case, the funding agency was the king, and therefore it would, it would have been a good idea. Um, the rest of Europe was not terribly happy with this idea. In particular, the French were very upset with the idea that it might be called George. And so actually, in, over time, it was kind of negotiated in the end of being called Uranus. But... Um the name that was that did catch on was actually this this again name coming from Greek mythology this time not Roman uh, called Uranus. So in in mythology Saturn was the father of Jupiter, Uranus was the father of Saturn. Uh, so it kind of makes sense in that way. And so there was some debate or it, it took some time for this name to catch on, but it was helped by about eight or nine years later after the discovery. Um, of the planet, um, the element uranium was discovered. And um, the person who named the element uranium named it after this planet. Um, and from then, then on, the name, the name really stuck. Uh, but yes, it almost ended up being called George.